Hello and welcome to Class Time. I'm Vanessa Francis and I'll be guiding you through today's CSEC English language lesson. Let's begin. So our lesson today, as you can see, will focus on narrative writing and today's topic is plot development and we're going to look at elements of conflict. Now the idea is that you cannot have a plot unless there is a conflict in there. So here are the things we'll be looking at today. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the different types of conflict. You should also be able to distinguish among these conflicts, and you should also be able to determine the conflict exhibited in given scenarios. So of course, we have to start at the very basic. What is conflict in narrative writing? So conflict, of course, is an opposition. It can be either internal or external. So if you think of the regular layman's term, conflict, it's a fight. But in a literary piece, it's not necessarily a literal fight, but there is a struggle going on of some nature. So the opposition can also come in the form of it being a challenge that your protagonist has to face or resolve. And this, of course, has to do with the way he's going to achieve this resolution. So the conflict is what your protagonist has to do throughout the story because you can't just have the story going, going, going and your protagonist doesn't have something he has to overcome or something he has to achieve. So there is also the idea that the conflict can be an obstacle that your protagonist has to face. So this obstacle now, it must be something that the reader will care about. And of course, it must be something that is important to your protagonist as well. Now, this obstacle has to go against whatever goal that your protagonist is trying to achieve, and it must be meaningful. So keep that in mind. Whatever you decide to have as the obstacle that your protagonist must face, it must be something very important. And in doing that, he must have certain obstacles that are going to try and hinder him or her from achieving that. And throughout the writing, we must see him or her going through the different processes that they have to do in order to achieve the final outcome. So now, what makes for good conflicts? So it must be clear, it must be specific, and naturally it must be relevant to the character. You can't have a character going through a conflict that has no significance to him or her. No, it can't be too abstract, and of course, it has to be something important. And you'll keep hearing that word coming up. It must be something important. It must mean something. Because if it doesn't mean anything, if it's just a regular day-to-day -day conflict, then why would your character have to go through it? What makes it interesting for somebody to read about it? No, it must exist within the character's realm. So the conflict must have something to do with them and the world you have created for them. So it must not be separate or remote. So you can't have, say for instance, a character who resides in Jamaica facing concerns that have nothing to do with Jamaica or Jamaicans. So it is not anything that is personal to this character. It is far removed. That doesn't make much of a sense. So you need to ensure that your character and the conflict are closely connected. It is something that they, they are like peas and pods. Now, naturally, because you're building a story and you want to ensure that your readers maintain interest in your story, your conflict has to be something that is not easily overcome. Because one of two things can happen. If it is an easy to overcome conflict, then you are going to end up dragging the story along because it is something that it could be overcome like that. Or you're going to end up having too many trivial things happening to your character in order to overcome this conflict that really wouldn't take very long to overcome. So it must be something that they have to struggle with, something that they have to fight with, something that they have to do different things to overcome. So it can't just be something that they just wake up one morning, boom, we're done. That won't work. 
that won't be interesting and you won't have much to write. Now, it must happen to characters that the readers care about. Your reader has to care about this character. So when we looked at character development, we looked at different ways for you to develop the character in such a way that the character becomes significant to your reader. Now, after you have done that or while you are doing that, then this conflict now is going to take over and we the reader are going to be so involved in it that we want to see this person overcome these difficulties. We want to see this person be the best version of themselves. So the conflict must happen to a character that we care about. So create a character worth caring about and then create a conflict that will draw us in as the reader, that will pull us to say, yes, John, go ahead, do it. We're cheering for you. Now, the conflict results when a compassion-worthy character wants something intensely. So again, it has to be something that they desire. So perhaps it will be something that they have to overcome, something personal to them, Whatever the case is, it has to be a conflict that they want to overcome and we want them to overcome. And it must be that there will be significant obstacles to them achieving this. So there must be instances where at some point we must doubt that they're going to achieve it. We must wonder how are they going to achieve it. Again, you don't want your story to be too predictable. So you want to ensure that you put obstacles in place that the reader is going to say, how is he going to do this? How is she going to do this? And you have to make sure, of course, that anything that happens is also relevant to the story at large. So you don't just put things in there just for the sake of putting it in there. You put things in there to build your story. So the idea of layered conflict comes to mind now. Now, if you think of the word layer, you have different types and you put them all together. So you are going to layer your conflicts, meaning you're not just going to have one type of conflict and that's it for the whole story. You can have a central conflict and then attached to that, you have different minor conflicts that are connected to it, that contribute to it. So you're going to put various types of conflict that are all interconnected and you have one major conflict that your story is going to be centered around. Now think about the idea that every novel has a major conflict and then Within that novel, you have different characters or even the same main character experiencing other types of conflict as they try to overcome this major conflict. So think of any adventure movie you have watched. The big adventure is the big conflict, but throughout the movie, you'll see different characters at different times having to overcome different things. Then you can have the external conflict now that is more complex. That one, everybody has to face or your main character is the one who has to face it alone. You can decide. So either your main character alone will face this or it is a conflict that affects everyone even though it is your main character who is going to be the one to be the hero of the day and save the day and help everyone. So the purpose of conflict. So you have to have the conflict. Now we need to know why you have to have the conflict. The most obvious thing, conflict keeps your story interesting. It is what you are going to read to find out what is going to happen next. If you have a story with no conflict, then you don't have a story really. You just have a little narrative of maybe a day's events, a day in the life of. And nothing spectacular happens. There's nothing to overcome. There's nothing. You're just narrating the day's events. It's almost like you're doing a descriptive piece. So the conflict is there to build interest in your story, to make the story more conflicting, for lack of a better term. You want something that is going to hold your reader, that is going to interest your reader, that is going to keep the reader reading. Now, it gives a sense of uncertainty. You have a protagonist, 
you have a problem, there must be some level of uncertainty as to will this person, will this character be able to overcome this obstacle you have placed before them. So this now is going to really pull your reader in because your reader now is going to be critiquing it. Why did he or she do this? Why did they never do this instead? How long is it going to take for him to overcome this issue? Those are some questions that your reader should be asking as they are reading. It shouldn't be a case where from your reader gets through the first paragraph, maybe the second one, then they know everything that's going to happen. No, no. Your conflict should be so designed, so crafted that they have to keep reading to figure out how it's going to end, how it's going to play out. Now, of course, if there is no conflict, then your main character has nothing to do. Your main character is just being described, going through an ordinary day, doing ordinary things. As I said before, no conflict, no story. If you think carefully, when you're learning about story writing, you learn the elements of plot, conflict, climax, resolution. Those are the basic elements. There are other sections to it, but those are the three basic elements. Now, if there is no conflict, then how are you going to arrive at a climax? And if there is no conflict to arrive at a climax, then what are you going to resolve? So now, we're going to look at the different types of narrative conflict. Now, the two major categories, you have internal conflict and you have external conflict. So keep that in mind. And remember, when we're layering, you can include both. Now for the nature of the internal conflict. So the internal conflict centers on the plot. Now what happens is there is an obstacle, yes, but the obstacle is directly connected to the plot and also directly connected to your main character. Now, it is an internal struggle, so it's psychological. It is something all in the character's mind. Remember, internal means inside. So whatever problem is happening, your character is facing it themselves on the inside. So it's not an outside force that is causing the problem. Outside forces can perhaps make the problem worse, but the real root of the problem is in the character's mind. So you have to think of something that your character is struggling with that is not necessarily as a result of someone else causing a problem or creating a situation for the problem to exist in. So the main character is experiencing some sort of inner turmoil. Your main character is going to be going through some kind of emotional pain. Your main character is going to do all of this and all of this increases the tension because the reader now who is seeing into the mind of your main character has to wonder how on earth can this person overcome? Now if you think about the nature of an internal conflict versus an external conflict, an external conflict, you can easily get some help with that. An external conflict, someone can easily come along and solve the problem for you. But when the conflict is internal, when the conflict is in your character's mind, how do you get out of that? It is your own creation. So your mind is just working against you almost. So the character is fighting his or her own thoughts, his or her own feelings, his or her own morals. So the inner demons of the character are what is being battled. Now you think of things like addiction. That is something that only the person who is addicted can overcome. They can get help from other people, but the ultimate decision to overcome the addiction lies within the person who is in the situation, who has the addiction. So you have things like that. On a simpler scale, you have people who have problems with for, uh, perhaps they are shy. No, you can have your character have to overcome shyness and it can be a very interesting internal conflict based on the situation they're in. Your character is afraid to speak up. 
but they're in a situation where they need to speak up. Perhaps the fate of the world rests on them being able to talk to a particular person and convince them of something. So you can have that internal conflict that will make your reading interesting. So the characters' inner demons, things that they have to struggle with, things that they have to overcome for themselves. No one can do it for them. They have to do it within themselves. Your character could also have an inner moral conflict. So your character could be faced with committing a crime or committing some atrocity. And they have to decide, should I do it? Should I not do it? Your character could be a member of a gang. And as part of the gang initiation, they have to perhaps assault someone. And this character might have reservations about doing it, especially if the person he, he or she is to assault is someone they know. Maybe a little old lady that was always kind to them. So they would have this moral internal conflict now. Should I beat up Miss Maisie? And Miss Maisie is always the one who gives me dinner when mommy is late from work. Miss Maisie is the one who called me over and taught me to read. Miss Maisie is the one who did this for me. Miss Maisie is the one who helped me through school. And now, he or she is faced with the idea that they have to hurt her. So that can be a moral um, conflict. So that is something that it crosses the line and they have to decide, do I cross the line or do I stay on the side of right? Now, another type of internal conflict is where your character might just be striving to be a better person. So they might be in a situation where all along they have been written off. They have been performing under par. They haven't been doing the best that they could do. And now they have an opportunity where they can improve themselves in some way, shape, or form. So now they have this struggle within themselves. Perhaps it will require more discipline than they normally have. Perhaps it will require more work than they normally do. So this is an internal struggle now that is for their own improvement, for their own betterment. And they have to decide how it is they're going to go against what they normally do in order to become a better version of themselves. So the next type of conflict would be the external. And the first one we're going to look at is, sorry, <laughs> we're going to look at examples of this type of conflict, man versus self. So here's one that you should be familiar with, Elsa in Frozen. If you remember, Elsa has these magical powers. She's able to turn things into ice. However, she's struggling with that. She has been struggling to control it. She's unable to control it. And instead of trying to control it, what she has been doing is actually suppressing it. She has been trying to keep it hidden. And then there comes a point when she cannot hide it and she ends up hurting someone she loves. And the story is so set up that we start to believe that she is the antagonist based on how she is struggling with this issue that she has. So these powers that she has, these supernatural powers are beyond her control. However, she is the one who is trying to suppress it. And when she can't suppress it, it goes out of control. Another one you might be familiar with in Fight Club, the narrator himself, He's conflicted between living this comfortable life that he knows and wanting something more. And that is a type of conflict many people can relate to. You have a life that you're living and you might just think, yes, my life is all right, but it's missing something. Something is missing. It wants more of something. So he is in that situation where he has to decide, does he take control of his life and make it more thrilling? Or does he take control of his life and be content with it as it is? And this conflict is so great that he ends up creating this alter ego. And I won't spoil it for you, but that too adds to the whole conflict of the story. So think of your characters who they are in their minds, a situation that they have created perhaps, or a situation that they have to overcome, but no one can know about it, no one can help them, or no one is the reason behind this issue existing in the first place. So now we can look at external conflicts. And here are the types. 
So you have man versus man, which is the most common one. We have man versus nature. There is man versus society versus fate or destiny versus the supernatural and versus technology. So you have a whole range to choose from. So let's look at, as I said, the most common one. So of course, by virtue of its name, it's one character versus another character. In this situation, your protagonist versus the antagonist. Remember the protagonist is your main character, the one who has to face the conflict, and your antagonist is either the one who creates the conflict or makes the conflict exceptionally worse. So it could have existed already and they're just adding fuel to the fire. Now, in this type of conflict, it is understood that it's good versus evil. So the good guy versus the bad guy. Sometimes a good guy is the underdog as well. So you might have a case where you have this very powerful character who is the antagonist, who rules everything, who makes everybody's life miserable. And you have the protagonist now who is going to stand up and say no more. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to put a stop to it. So that's a grand scale one. Or it doesn't even have to be that epic. It can simply be two people who are at different ends. So they're at odds with each other. So two neighbors can be in conflict and one is the protagonist, one is the antagonist. Again, it depends on the type of story you want to create. Now, you have to have two different outlooks in order for this conflict to make sense. It can't be that they're in agreement. So your protagonist and your antagonist have to be at odds. They have to be at opposite ends. So one wants one thing and the other wants something different. So they have different goals. They have different opinions. They have different outlooks. Now, when each of them within themselves believe that they are right and the other person is wrong, then that right there sets up a really standard conflict, but a conflict that can lend itself to many, many, many different outcomes. Because the whole idea is you have two characters who each believe they are correct. They're standing on their moral high ground. I believe I am right because this is how it should be. He doesn't believe so, so he is wrong. And on the other side, I believe I am right because this is how it should be. She doesn't believe so, so she is wrong. So you have these two characters who are like the yin and the yang. They're at opposite ends. And that now will set up a situation for constant conflict. And you can have them having to face off more than one time. They can have different times when they have to face each other, different times when your protagonist looks like they're winning and they don't, different times when the antagonist looks like they're winning and they don't. So you can have a constant back and forth, back and forth until the ultimate climax. So here are some examples of man versus man. So this one, if you think back to when you were younger and you read The Wizard of Oz, we have Dorothy who has to face off against the Wicked Witch. So right throughout the story, that is the nature of the conflict. She wants to end up seeing the wizard, but all along the way, she ends up encountering various challenges that the witch sets. And if you think of a typical murder mystery, any one of all, you always have the investigator and then you have the person who is committing the crimes. So the investigator is actually trying to solve the mystery and the other person now is just there going and going and creating havoc all along. So what you need to do is ensure that you have a situation that we must not see the investigator just overcoming quickly. We want to see the constant building, building, building. As it goes along, then the conflict is resolved. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be back with more English language.
Welcome back to class time. So let's pick up where we left off. So we are looking now at man versus nature conflict. Now for this one, we don't have another character creating the problem. For this one, we have a force of nature. So it can be a situation where it's some kind of animal. It can be a setting, a physical setting. It can be a force of nature. So a storm, a fire, a flood, that sort of thing. So now your characters have to battle against nature herself instead of another actual character. So here are some examples that we need to look at. So think of the fault in our stars. Now we have the characters Hazel and August and each of them has cancer. Now their struggle is not with each other. Their struggle is not with any external force. Their struggle is with an actual disease. So this is the force of nature that they have to contend with. They have to deal with the fact that they are sick. And this is what sets up the whole situation for the story that they go through. Think of contagion. In contagion, there's a deadly virus that is widespread. Does it sound familiar? And a team of doctors have to try and stop it by formulating a vaccine. Does that sound familiar? So in this case, again, the conflict is with nature itself. So for those two examples, you're looking at a sickness that is taking over. So it's not a person that they can fight and it's not an internal battle that they can face. It is actual nature itself. Look at this example now. Most of us have watched Ice Age. So in Ice Age 2, when you think of the meltdown, Manny, Sid and Diego, they discover that the ice dam is about to break. And if it breaks, the entire valley will be flooded. And of course, there will be much damage and loss of life. So they now have to try and evacuate everyone to safety before this happens. So they are fighting against this impending doom that nature will cause. They have only three days. So right there we have a race against time situation being set up. So these characters have to try and overcome the conflict before a particular time and the conflict is caused by their natural environment. Think of another type of conflict now, man versus society. Now, we have looked at man versus nature. We have looked at man versus man. So what do you believe is the difference now with man versus society? When you think of society, what comes to mind? So the whole idea is that the story sets the character against a group of people. And this group of people represent a tradition, it might represent an institution, it might represent a law, a certain law that has been passed, or any other construct of society itself. So they're not up against any one individual, they're up against a system. So it is a system that they have to overcome. And this system can be of any type. So it can be religious, it can be moral, it can be economic, it can be any type of system at all. Now, here are the issues that they might have to face. So it might be some form of prejudice. So remember you have class prejudice, you have color prejudice, you have racial prejudice, you have gender prejudice. So you have various types of prejudice that they might have to overcome within the system. They might have to face certain environmental issues as well. They might have to face false accusations. And it might be a case where certain characters are being ostracized, that means you cut them off, you separate them totally. So you have a group of people who are cast out because of a certain belief system, a certain moral system, that sort of thing. So let's look at some examples that I'm sure you should be familiar with. Now, those of you who have ever read To Kill a Mockingbird are aware that Atticus Finch, the main character's father, has to come up against racism. And Atticus, unlike the rest of the people within his society, does not uphold with racism. He does not support racism. He believes that all men are created equal. So because of that, 
that is a man versus society conflict because here we have this character who believes one thing but the people who are within his social group within his society believe something different from what he does now those of you who have ever read charlotte's web know the story of wilbur wilbur is a cute little pig and wilbur unfortunately because he's a pig is about to be eaten at some point in time so in Wilbur's society, he is a meal. He's not a snack. He's a whole meal. So Wilbur now has to face off against this system where he is likely to lose his life in order to feed the people around him. So that is a man versus society situation right there because Wilbur, even though he's a pig, he's a character, and his struggle is that his life is in danger because the society holds the belief that pigs our food. Now, those of you who've ever read The Handmaid's Tale or more likely watched the series should be familiar with this type of conflict as well. Because in this story, we have a society that treats women as property of the state. So women don't have freedom. Women are property. And our main character, Offred, struggles with the restrictions that she has to face. And what makes this story even more compelling is the idea that it has been layered now. So there is this man versus society conflict, but within that conflict, you also have a man versus nature because the society became the way it has because of pollution and the pollution led to sterility and everything just built up, built up in different layers until it got to this point where women now are basically just carriers of the future carriers of the upcoming generation. Now, another interesting type of conflict, man versus fate or destiny. Now, if you think of fate or destiny, what comes to mind? Something that you cannot change, something that is set, something that is prescribed. So there's no way for you to veer left or veer right. So how is your character going to go against destiny? This is something that is supposed to happen. This is why it makes a compelling conflict. So, of course, the natural thing that happens is that your character has to fight against what is predestined for him or her, what is preordained. Your character has to fight against something that they really shouldn't have any control over. So it is a prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. It is something that has been foretold. A man child will be born and he shall slay you. So now your character has to fret about every boy child that is born and of course try to fight against that. We see it quite often in the Bible and we see it quite often in Greek mythology as well, where a character tries to change their fate or destiny. So here are some examples. Now, in Lord of the Rings, what is foretold? Frodo has to be the one to carry the ring and destroy it in the fires of Mordor. So throughout that story, throughout the novels, we see him going through different aspects of life, going through different situations, all with the ultimate goal of being the one to destroy the one ring because it was destined for him to do it. Now, all along, there are things that are going to fight against that. And this sets up the whole idea of his fate. Is he really supposed to be the one to destroy the ring? Ultimately, we see that it is him, but it isn't him. But he does end up fulfilling and resolving the conflict of destroying the ring. If you think of in Game of Thrones, there are several destinies and several fates that are brought up. Now, the ultimate one that drove through the entire series was the fact that the Night King was fated to return. He was destined to return. And therefore, all the characters have to face that destiny, have to face that prophecy, have to face that fate. So all the characters have to deal with this impending doom. And of course, those of you who watch it know how it ended up. The next type of conflict man versus the supernatural and this one is 
it tends to be a little different from the rest in the sense that there is magic involved most often. There are supernatural beings. So this one has a more fantastic spin on it. So we have a character who has to face things like vampires, werewolves, aliens, ghosts, anything that is outside of the human realm, so to speak. So this is supernatural because we have a human being or a character who is limited in capacity, who has to face off against something that is grossly out of their range, out of their realm. So for this situation, you have a character who definitely has the odds stacked against them. In this situation, you definitely have a character who will have to learn special skills, perhaps, who will have to find special items to help them, who will have to get help to overcome these supernatural beings that they have to face. So this character, all on his or her own, should not be able to overcome this conflict. This character is the character who definitely will need to see growth and development taking place. So maybe they have to go learn to fight. Maybe they have to go travel far distances to get special talisman, things like that. So this one lends itself to a lot of development. So here are some examples that you might be familiar with. So if you think of The Shining by Stephen King, or almost any Stephen King novel, as a matter of fact, there are different supernatural elements that come out. So in The Shining, we have some supernatural elements. In The Haunting of Hill House as well, the name suggests there is a ghost, there is a malignant spirit in the house that the characters have to overcome. In War of the Worlds, it was an alien invasion. In The Exorcist, it is a girl who unfortunately has been possessed by an otherworldly being. And in Southern Reach series, we have other alien type things going on as well. And almost anything by Edgar Allan Poe has some reference to a ghost or some kind of otherworldly creature. So with this type of conflict, remember, you are able to create more. It lends itself to more creativity because you have to create this world now, this other world, this other realm, and you play the rules how you want the rules to be played. Now we have man versus technology. And this, as well as man versus the supernatural, are the more recent conflicts that have emerged based on the different types of readings that have come out. So literature has evolved to include these types of conflicts. And this is a case where you understand how everyday life affects what is produced. So art used to imitate life, now they are working side by side. So with man versus technology, think about it. Any character who has to come up against any form of technology. Now, technology is all around us. Right now, you're sitting at home. You're either watching a TV or a tablet or a laptop or your phone. What if all of a sudden that device was to come alive? How would you react? So that is the type of situation you have to think about with man versus technology. How is it that your character is going to overcome something that man made. So this is a situation where science moves beyond the human control. So when that happens, you have this man versus technology, character versus technology. And usually what happens in this type of conflict, questions are raised about what makes a human being human? What makes us different from machines? How is it that we are one thing and they are another? So many of these types of stories that you would have seen on TV or read will ask that question. They will always come down to, is being human the better option? Is being human better than being a machine? Many of these types of stories, you have the whole issue of logic coming out. How logical are human beings? We don't always think one plus one. Sometimes we think maybe if you carry this over there, something else will happen. So the idea of being logical, methodical, 
those issues will arise because human beings have emotions and some human beings are driven by emotions. The technology would represent the lack of emotion or the desire to have emotion. So there's always that face off, the logic versus the emotion. So here are some examples to think about. So the most obvious one, the matrix. Now, in the matrix, we have a situation where human beings have become enslaved by machines and enslaved to the point where the human beings are the power source for the machines. And each person is put under in a matrix where it is an alternate reality. And those who come out of the matrix come to realize that what they grew up thinking and feeling did not exist. It was not reality. It was just a creation, a figment of a cultural imagination. So it's a unified imagination that they're all sharing. So the idea is that, is it better to stay in the matrix where everything is fine and dandy and you don't know that there are struggles going on? Or is it better to maintain or recapture, regain your humanity? your real reality. So that type of struggle goes right throughout the series because you have this group of people who are trying to free everyone from the matrix. And throughout the series too, you see where there are those who actually decide that maybe it's better if they had stayed where they were. Maybe it's better that you don't know that all this mess is going on outside. Maybe we should just stay in our ignorance. Ignorance can be blissful. So that is the type of setup you have with man versus technology. Now another one is in the Avengers series. This particular one, the Avengers um, Age of Ultron. Again, you have a situation where there is an artificial intelligence that is trying to take over. And that is something that is common to many of these types of situations. You have an artificial intelligence that is trying to take over. So you see it happening also in the Transformers as well. And you'll see it happening in many different types of books and many different types of TV shows and movies and so on. So what happens there? Sometimes it is as in this case where it is the humans who set up the situation because Ultron was activated more or less by two of the characters. And then after Ultron has been activated, Ultron decides that in order to save humanity, it needs to destroy humanity. There is no way to save the world than to destroy the world. Doesn't make sense to us, but it makes sense in the logical framework that is Ultron. So the whole idea again is that when you have technology versus characters, you have to show the difference. The fact that the technology is going to think one way. It is going to come to one conclusion that makes sense to it, and that conclusion does not have to make sense to us, and it's fine. Because in that conclusion not making sense to us, then we are basically supporting the idea that human beings are flawed, which we are. We are flawed. We do not have all the answers. We would like to have all the answers, but we don't have all the answers. So keep in mind all these different types of conflicts, man versus man, man versus society, man versus nature, man versus the supernatural, man versus technology, and of course, man versus self. So we're going to our final break, and when we come back, we'll wrap things up. Soon come.
Welcome back. Now, let's recap before we go into the test of your skills. So we have been looking at narrative writing and we have been focusing on the different types of conflict. Now, we already looked at why conflict is necessary. It is what keeps a reader engaged in the reading. It is what makes for compelling reading. It's what gives interest to what you have written. Now, we have looked at the different types. Two major categories, internal, external. Internal meaning the character has to overcome something within themselves. A fear that they have, an addiction that they have, a struggle that they face alone in their minds. And we have external conflicts that come in various forms. So a character versus another character. A character versus a force of nature, an animal, a storm, whatever the case is. A character versus the supernatural. A character versus society, the rules and regulations that govern society at large. A character versus technology. So keep those in mind as you look at these different scenarios. For each scenario, you need to determine what type of conflict is being exhibited. So let's start. So here's our first one. In the Terminator, a cyborg assassin goes back in time to eliminate a threat to the future of an artificial intelligent defense network that has achieved self-awareness. What are the elements you see coming out there? Is it internal? We don't have any idea now that there is somebody battling some inner turmoil, inner demon. Let's look at the elements that are brought up. So we have cyborg assassin. So right there, it should be leading you a particular direction. Then we have in going back in time to eliminate the threat to an artificial intelligent defense network. So two things are leading you in a particular direction. So by now, you should know what type of conflict this is. So there is your list. Which of those was exhibited? Man versus technology, of course. We had a cyborg who was the one who is the antagonist, set up as the antagonist, and the additional element of the cyborg defending another version of artificial intelligence as well. So it's a double dose. All right, so here is our next scenario. So in Thor, Ragnarok, Thor fights to save Asgard from the prophesied Ragnarok after his father Odin dies, releasing Thor's imprisoned older sister Hela, who, it has been foretold, will bring destruction to Asgard. Now again, there are certain elements that you need to focus on. So we have a protagonist who is Thor. We do have an antagonist who is his sister. So is it man versus man? But then if you look closer, you'll notice certain key words. He is trying to save Asgard from the prophesied Ragnarok. And it was foretold that his sister is the one who would bring destruction. So who is he really facing or what is he really facing? Is he just facing a man versus man or something else? So again, here are your options. Remember, there's a prophecy. It was foretold that his sister would bring destruction after his father passed. So naturally, what we have is man versus fate or destiny. So Thor is trying to overcome what has been foretold for himself and his homeland. Now here's the other one. The series Lock and Key the Locke family children are keeping magical keys that have various powers that they unlock. And they're trying to keep these keys a secret. And the key house is a home to a malicious presence that will stop at nothing in its quest for the Omega key. So look at the elements we have there. So we have a group of children. They have magical keys. And each magical key unlocks various magical powers. And within the house, there is a malicious presence. And this malicious presence is searching for an omega key. 
So right there we have the makings of what type of conflict? Which one? This one? Yes, this one. Man versus the supernatural. Because we have the various elements of magic and we also have the mysterious presence of a malignant being which is possibly like a ghost or some kind of monster. So yes, man versus the supernatural. Here's the other one. So we have Cole Seer in the sixth sense. And he struggles with accepting his ability to interact with the dead and has conflicting feelings about helping them or ignoring them. And this leads to a moral conflict. Now you have to be careful because there are different things going on here. Notice it says that he's struggling to accept his ability. What ability does he have to interact with the dead? And he's also conflicted about how he can help them or if he should help them or if he should just ignore them. So right there you have two options to choose from. Which one is the type of conflict in this storyline? So you have two options. I'm sure you were leaning towards man versus the supernatural, but it's really man versus self because his struggle is not against the people that he's seeing. It's not against the dead. His struggle is within himself accepting what he has, what powers he has, and how he's going to overcome those situations in his mind. All right, one more. In Babe, the titular character is a pig who battles the odds to be accepted as a sheepdog by the other farm animals and the people at the fair. So we have a pig who we know what pigs do, they grunt, they roll around in the mud, they eat a lot. And in this case, your pig wants to be a sheepdog. A pig is not a sheepdog, but he wants to be one. So what is the nature of his conflict? Who is he in conflict with? All right, you should know that he's in conflict with society because the society he lives, with, lives in believes one thing. He is to be a pig, but he wants to be something totally different. So remember, when you're thinking about your conflicts, it is good to read different types of stories. I have been using movies and shows that are based on books for the most part because it's good to see them played out, but you also need to read them because that is how you'll know how to write them yourselves. So watching it can give you the idea, but reading them can tell you how to put them down on paper. All right? So that's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you so much for joining us today and be sure to join us again tomorrow at 9 a.m. for more class time. Until next time, keep safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.